uh, this is uh, where we uh, left um, the discussion uh, on uh, uh, Wednesday. So just to remind you what we are doing, we are just uh, introducing some uh, basic concepts that uh, will be useful in our analysis of transnational companies. Uh, we've also discussed a little bit the reasons or the factors that uh, favored the emergence of the time of transnational companies, both uh, from the uh, infrastructural point of view, and we mentioned improvement in communication technologies and in transportation, in transports, and also we mentioned um, improvement from the organizational point of view. Uh, in particular, we discussed uh, uh, organizational innovation, such as uh, uh, different ways of organizing uh, companies, uh, moving in particular from what's called as the uh, Marshallian firms to the uh, M form, to, to the U form, to the M form. Um, and all these organizational innovations, we said, they favor they favored uh, over time the emergence of transnational companies. Then we discussed a few definitions about uh, again, what is a parent company and the uh, home uh, um, and the um, uh, home country? We discussed also the definitions of uh, uh, foreign affiliates in terms of uh, in terms of associates and subsidiaries. And now we are ready to make a step forward, which is uh, more related to, to to having a look at some empirical data that tells us more about how uh, transnational companies have uh, evolved over over time the first graph that i will be uh, i will show you the first data is this one uh, this uh, uh, shows you uh, the uh, number of transnational companies comparing two periods the first one is uh, 1968-69 and the second one in two, is 2010 okay so these are data that are available in your book it's they're a bit old but they reflect one important trend uh, which is uh, clear, which is that uh, uh, the number of transnational companies has uh, increased steadily uh, since uh, uh, the end of World War, um, uh, World War II, and in particular from the 70s to the uh, 2010, it has increased uh, uh, of several of several order of magnitudes. Um, so this, so today, for instance, so in 2010, at least, there were uh, more than uh, 100,000 transnational companies operating worldwide. Um, again, what is it that favored this large increase? So last, the last, during the last lecture, we said transnational companies have, all, have always existed, but their number has increased over time. This graph gives us an idea of what, what this means in terms of uh, the number has increased, okay? It has increased a lot over time, and the reason why it has increased is partly related to the uh, innovations in terms of transportation and communications, as well as innovation in terms of organizations uh, that we uh, discussed during the last class. Uh, of course, on top of this technological and organizational innovation, it's important to mention also some other aspects some other factor that favored uh, such uh, growth in the number of transnational companies that are not directly related to uh, the organization of a multinational company or the creation of a multinational company, but they are still important. And they are more related basically to the political environment, if you want, and to the, let's say, macroeconomic policies that have been implemented over time. With respect to the political environment, it's important to notice that after World War II and uh, under the uh, global order that emerged after World War II, in particular under the um, umbrella of uh, the International Monetary Fund, Fund and, the, um, and the GATT, which is the uh, General Agreement on, 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 on Trade, um, Western countries, in particular Europe and the United States, have become much less uh, 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 willing to uh, adopt protectionist policies in terms of both trade barriers, but also in terms of uh, uh, limitation to the movement of capitals uh, across countries. This implies, of course, that 
the cost of making uh, uh, capital investments in different countries has reduced over time. And this, of course, created a political uh, environment or an economic environment that make, made it much more convenient for companies to expand their business abroad, not only through trade, but also via foreign direct investments, meaning investments in, uh, uh, in, 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 in capital stock of foreign companies, which implies, basically, uh, it, it, it lowers that this political environment or the, these economic policies, they have lowered the costs for the creation of multinational companies. So ma they, they made it more convenient, in a sense, to become a multinational company. At the same time, this, uh, the second important uh, political uh, choice that was made during this period was the, uh, related to the large programs uh, of liberalization and privatization that, uh, during the last years, uh, they have done what? They basically uh, freed a lot of capital resources that could be invested somewhere else. So here the idea is, for instance, in Italy, uh, after, right after World War II, there were lots of uh, uh, public companies, meaning large public companies. There were lots of, for instance, also public banks. Okay? So banks or companies owned by public authorities. Things, for instance, of... Uh, 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 like the companies that were uh, managing the telecommunication, the, 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 the phone network, or that was at the time was called SIP. Uh, I still have, I'm relatively young, but I, I'm old enough to remember where, when, when SIP was the, uh, the, co the public company uh, that was managing the telephone network. That was a public company. Then, of course, why public companies, for a public company, is more difficult to become a multinational company? Because, of course, the public company is owned by the state for the largest share. And it is kind of uh, rare that a, 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 a state or a government or a public authority uh, decides to acquire control of also of some other private company in a different country. Because the mandate that the public company receives from the government or from the state is to basically be concerned with uh, the uh, offering of services and products in the states where the company belongs to. Um, however, the liberalization and the privatization programs, basically what they did, they, they privatized these companies, they made it, uh, they make it possible uh, for private investors to acquire control, to buy control um, of, of these companies, and of course, once you privatize a company, then the private owner can easily decide to transform the company in a multinational company by acquiring stocks also from, or, or buying um, capital stocks also from, uh, that belongs to company in, in, in other countries. So this, of course, again, uh, they, this policy, they lowered, they, they basically not they lowered the cost, but they uh, increased, they, uh, uh, they, they made it easier in a sense uh, for multinational company to emerge. Um, uh, now, all these factors, uh, what I was mentioning now and what I mentioned in the, in the previous class, uh, explain basically why it is easier for firms to take uh, the international route to growth, meaning why for, for firms it's convenient to become a multinational company. However, they do not tell us why a company decides to do so. Okay? So they don't explain us what are the advantages and the, as well as the costs for a firm to become a multinational company. To answer this question, that is to say to explain why firm at a certain point they decide to become a multinational company, what we need to do is to dig a little bit more into the theory of transnational companies. And this is what actually we will try to do in the first part of our course. Okay? So in this class we will start um, and then we will continue in the, in the, in the classes of, of next week, what we want to do is basically to look at the theory of transnational company and try to see if these theories that have changed over time, they can give us an answer to this question. And the question is, let me remind you, why firms find it convenient to become multinational company? So why, why basically, why do multinational company exist? Okay. This is basically what we will try to uh, investigate. Uh, now, as I said, we will try to do this step by step. The first things that we can do that help us in 
understanding what are the factors that can play a role in our theory is to look at some uh, data that tell us what are the characteristics of transnational companies. And uh, uh, this is what I will, uh, I will do now. Okay? And again, to do this, uh, I will use uh, uh, the Effigie dat data set that I was mentioning to you in the previous class. It's a data set that I, I use for my research as well, and is, uh, I usually sometime, uh, I sometime use it also for, for, uh, for the student's thesis. So if in the future any of you can be, uh, is interested in, in, in working on these topics and on doing a thesis using empirical data, uh, it's of course uh, welcome to contact me because uh, I, I, I usually, I, I, I'm actually now supervising a thesis using the Fija dataset.